Hello, everybody, and welcome to our weekly Q&A with the Family Support Team at the St. Louis ARC. I'm Sharon Spurlock, and I'll be your host today. Today, we're going to be uh, taking a little deep dive with one of the newer employees at the St. Louis ARC. She's got a brand new position for us, but she's not really new to us. I'm very excited to uh, introduce Shatina Longmire. And really, Shatina, I want you to introduce yourself to everybody. Tell us about your professional background and how you landed at the ARC. Well, thank you, Sharon, for welcoming me. I am Shatina Longmire. I am the coordinator at the Metro Community Engagement Program and also with collaboration of city services. I have been back with the ARC full time for a little over three months in this newly, <laughs> this new role, right? It's a collaboration of a couple things that the um, that's going on at the ARC and here I am. I have worked for the ARC for uh, years in several different capacities from direct support, um, I've done leisure, I've done the gamut of things. So. Um, and this thing of being back with the ARC, my role as a community engagement coordinator at the Metro program is just to oversee the day services program in the St. Louis City area in the Del Mar Divine Building. And I am also over working with the different agency, different program, different departments in our agency that offer services in St. Louis City. So the point of the pro of my position is to help the programs that are offering services in the city to grow, to expand, so that the people in St. Louis City get to experience the quality services that the St. Louis Arc provides to the region, the area. Um, just letting everybody know that, hey, we're here, we're ready to help you um, with whatever you may need, and we offer a variety of services. You know, please join uh, so that we can give you the quality service that you really are looking for, that the ARC provides. Yeah, I'm really excited about this role because I think a lot of people don't realize that during COVID, our uh, funding in the city actually went up 80%. And in a lot of those cases, we haven't been able to serve as many families as we have funding for. So we really want to reach out and make sure that people know that we have ac they have access to services, many of which are free. So Mm -hmm. um, it's really a great opportunity. I do want to talk to you a little bit. My heart lives with the community engagement program and that metro location is one of my favorites. It's always been a super active site. For people out there that don't know what community engagement is, can you just tell a little bit about what somebody might expect if they are a participant in that program? Absolutely. So our day services program operates Monday through Friday and we operate with groups of one to one person by themselves being supported with one staff or a group of people and a group of three or four being supported by one staff, depending upon their support needs. So what we do is we ensure that our um, participants have access to their community, whether it be through volunteer sites, whether it be through leisure activities, just getting to explore the community. And the, one of the biggest, um, the biggest attributes about our our site specifically is that we are located in the heart of the city and there's access to so many things in this area where there are free things and we're by the science center, we're by Forest Park, we're by the art museums. Like we have access to so many great programs and opportunities and activities. We volunteer majority of our week at our site. Everybody goes out and tries to do something to make a difference. So whether that be, you know, helping families in need by doing some grocery shopping for them, whether that be volunteering at the Botanical Gardens, we've been doing that for uh, many, many years. So our program specifically does a lot of different um, things in the community to one, make the community a little bit better for the next person. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, introduction to see. It's a great site. Um, and you're right, the city makes it even more, has provides even more opportunities. So I love hearing about that. So, uh, you know, before we talk about our specific programs, I want to talk about where we're located in the city, because I think for the people that are aware of the Del Mar Divine, there's a lot of excited buzz about it, but a lot of people don't know what the Del Mar Divine is. Can you explain where we're housed in the city? Absolutely. So we are located in the Del Mar Divine Building. It is located off of Del Mar in the heart of the city between the streets of Belt and Clara. So geographically think near Forest Park, the Bolivar, not quite down at like Kings Highway and Del Mar, but we're really, really close. Union and Del Mar, really, really close. So we're located at prime, um, prime uh, location. 
to a lot of different um, activities. And this particular building that we are in is the Delmar Divine. So in this building, there are a number of different nonprofit organizations that are operating their programs and services out of this building. Now I will say the St. Louis Park is the only program that is being, that the only agency operating a actual day service program in the building. But with, there are so many different organizations providing all different kinds of services in the building from um, just, community volunteer organizations. Uh, we have Seed Next Door, which is a nonprofit organization. We have uh, Mental Health of America. They're just to name a few of the organizations that are located in this building, even on our floor. Yeah, I love the space. It's it's so bright and all the art that they've brought in there. It just feels like a really wonderful place to be. And every time I work there, I see something uh, in the elevator or in the on the community board or something that I think, ooh, I want to go to that. I want to participate in that. And I know a lot of the organiz organizations serve children, as do we. So our children's team has been really lucky to partner with some of the organizations that are there. Yes. Um, I think if we're going to talk about what the services we offer in the city, why don't I open up our... Um, our presentation that we uh, have available and Family Supports is embedded in the city. We have two navigators that have their primary office space at Del Mar Divine. Um, some of the things that we do there are to offer individual navigation to individuals with disabilities or their families or both to kind of think through what are the next steps that they need to achieve. It can be a short term goal like helping to find uh, resources if they're struggling to pay bills. It can be a goal like preparing for a meeting, like an IEP or an ISP, or it can be more long-term, like what can I do when my family member isn't going to be able to live with me anymore and how do I plan? So that's navigation. We are the only respite provider in St. Louis City for flow-through voucher respites, which means families can apply uh, for respite services if they have a family member three years and older with an intellectual and developmental disability, and we will give them a certain number of hours that they can use to hire somebody of their choice pay them what they want to pay them so that they can get a break from caregiving. And we reimburse them uh, monthly at a rate of $9.25 an hour. Uh, it's a supplement to what they pay typically, but it's really a great chance for families to get that break. And then there's just some family support groups. We actually have 15 family support groups. If you go on our website, you can see all of the many things we cover. A um, couple of them that I wrote put down here was our supports for older adults group, which is a really cool group with a bunch of parents in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and siblings who have an older person living with them. And then Planning Forward is an eight-week series to do that big planning we talked about in a more of an educational set setting and that's provided virtually. And we recently added counseling. So we provide a counseling to at no cost to individuals with disabilities for short-term counseling. We imagine six to 12 sessions. We also have some group therapeutic groups that are involved there. And we also reach out to self-advocates by having a self-advocate group that meets virtually every Thursday. So that's just a sample of the things that are available in family support. Oh, look, it's more family support. You're in a Q&A today, so you know what that looks like. But we also have workshops in the evening that are primarily um, virtual as well. All of those live on our YouTube page. So please go back and check that if there's something that you're looking for. Uh, those are even things we can share with people in other states. So lots of really great information there. Uh, employment services I will talk about, and then you've already talked about CE. Uh, in the city of St. Louis, we can uh, start with people in a discovery process to figure out what kind of employment they want and what kind of skills they have. We can help people to prepare for interviews and find job opportunities, help them get their resume ready, and then also help them by coaching them on the job until we're able to fade out to no more than 25%. Um, our employment services are primarily funded by vocational rehabilitation, so that's the starting part for those. Um, 
The day program, I'll just say, is funded through the Medicaid waiver or private pay, but it's a pretty uh, expensive program since the services are 30 hours a week. So um, ideally, we'd help you get connected through the Department of Mental Health to get some Medicaid waiver funding for that service. So the PLT or Parents Learning Together program is a program for individuals who have developmental disabilities themselves who are parents. And what the program does is it provides them support to be able to learn um, how to best parent, like best practices, how to go through the developmental milestones with your child to ensure that you're progressing, that they're progressing, that they have their support needs met, and that you feel supported to be the best parent that you can be. The, the purpose of the program is to help parents who have disabilities be the best parents that they can and support them in any way possible to ensure that they have the support, to have the things that they need to do so. So that's basically the gist of the program. I love to see the parents uh, at the, the Del Mar Divine site. It's a combination of uh, face-to-face -face learning where there's a lot of peer support and also home visitation. And yeah. our Capable Kids and Families is also a home visitation program where we deliver appropriate, developmentally appropriate toys and therapeutic equipment free of charge to families of children ages birth to six who have a developmental delay or developmental disability. Um, those are loaner pieces of equipment so that families can use them for specific developmental milestone that they're working towards and then returning them to us so they can go to another ch child. Um, while they're in that program, the home visitation person is able to talk to the parents about how they're feeling and make sure that they're getting the support they need to feel confident and strong in their parenting role. Uh, this is so important because as people are leaving the school system, it's really important that we provide some extra support to make sure they make that transition out of school into adult life successfully. So in the city, we have neighborhood experiences, and it's actually for teens 13 to 21, where they're going to spend time with us Monday through Friday, volunteering in places of their choice to build those experiences, see what they enjoy and what they don't like in different kinds of work environments, and ultimately walk away with a digital portfolio that shows their experiences and a resume. Um, as they leave school, they can move through into our next team, which includes Launch and Next Ed. Those are both programs for skill building for young adults, um, 16 to 20 and eight, or 16 to 30 and 18 to 30. The Launch program is more of a one on one session for somebody that has a specific goal. And it could be a goal for anything it could be about learning to drive, it could be about strengthening their relationships with people. It could be about getting a job or moving out into their own place. We provide one-on-one -on -one coaching support with a transition specialist, but also offer classes that they can choose from on a calendar that align with their goals. And then Next Ed is a curriculum-based independent supported living program where uh, participants go through a variety of um, pillars of learning to uh, learn all the things they need to know to be able to live as independently as possible. That program is, is delivered uh, both virtually and face-to-face, -face, and the face-to-face -face experience is in the city in a uh, an Airbnb near the zoo. So um, that program also has a summer component, a summer camp component, two weeks of day services in that uh, Airbnb. And then there's one week that's an overnight experience on campus at UMSL. So if you haven't looked into that, please check that out. So that is our city services in a nutshell. That's a lot, Shatina. How are you going to learn about all those programs? Meet with those departments. <laughs> so is that what you're doing now is really getting to learn about all the different things that are going on? Yes. And what services they provide, what support they need, and who's the target market, right? Like who's the people that they're trying to reach to get them to be able to access those programs and figuring out where we need to go to meet those, to find those people. Yeah. Yeah, so we have spent quite a bit of our resources putting together a city team mm -hmm. where we're all collaborating to learn about each other and about all the services and then figure out how can we do more to do outreach. Would you talk a little bit about that 
uh, committee and, and some of the goals that we've got for the next month or two? Absolutely. So the City Services Committee is a combination of all the departments that provide services in St. Louis City. Um, the directors, the coordinators, just depending upon the different roles that each person each person provides. So um, we all meet once a month at least to talk about where we are now, where we want to go, what has been done in the past, and what you know what we want things to look like come in the future. So one of the things that we've talked about is being able to reach our target market. So we have talked about ways to get different people um, information about our city services so that people are made aware that the St. Louis Arc is here in the city, not just in the county, not just at our main office, but we're actually ready to provide all these wonderful services in the city area to city residents. So one of the things that we're working on is having an open house at the Del Mar Divine building so that people in the city can come to one of our sites in the city and really get to meet every department that provides the service in the city will be at this open house. And the purpose of this open house is to work on that intake process, to meet the people where they at and let the people know that we're here and help them, you know, with the enrollment process and intake and get the ball rolling so that people can really see and get to experience the quality and wonderful services that St. Louis Park provides to everybody that participates in our program. And that's for people of any age to come to the open house? Absolutely. So this is open to babies, children, because we provide services to them, to elderly families, caseworkers, service coordinators, um, mom, dads, aunts, uncles, cousins. Like this is a very um, community oriented open house where we're here and willing to work with everybody. We're really just, you know, looking forward to, welcoming everybody to our little small home in Del Mar Divine, and then, you know, giving everybody access to our services, just the quality of services that we really want to show people we're able to provide everywhere. Um, so I'm hoping that there's somebody out there that's interested in thinking, oh boy, at my uh, medical clinic, I have a lot of people that, you, that need these services at my church. I'd really like to know more about these services. What's the best way for somebody to reach out if they want to learn more about how to connect with us and maybe have a presentation about our services or, or just build a, a relationship? You can contact the main office and always get transferred to the department in which you need the service from. So you definitely can call me. I'm sure Sharon is very open and willing to speak with any and everybody about the services that St. Louis Arc provides. Yeah, if you call our main number, 314-569-2211, we will get you to the right person. I'm going to um, throw Shatina a curveball uh, and ask her a question I didn't give her in advance. And, you know, one of the things you didn't mention earlier is that you used to be a case manager in the city of St. Louis. Yes. So I'm just wondering if you have maybe a a success story or some other experience that you can share about what difference will it make for a person with a disability to connect with an agency, whether it's the ARC or another agency in the city, why is it important to find out about these services? So as a, I was a service coordinator for six years. Um, and as a service coordinator, it is very important for people to be able to Find the services that's for them, right? To be able to really access your community, to be involved in whatever that looks like for you. It's not always about what you know, but it's about who you know. And being able to explore your community and find the right organization to really be able to take your services to the next level. That was one of the things with the St. Louis Art that has always stood out to me, coming from the organization as a DSP and then working the last six years up until recently as a service coordinator, as of the services that are being provided are just at another level. When it comes to the quality of services, it's just different. And so I will say, just coming from the, that background in the last six years, I can tell you that there is a huge impact on people's lives when you link a person with the right support. It's, it's like your support system makes the difference in even all of our lives, right? It doesn't matter what your ability or capability may be, but having the right support system can take you to the next level, whether that be in your educational endeavors, whether that be in your career and professional endeavors, whether that be, you know, you exploring your options and interests and being able to try different things and do different things and having the support to do so. So, 
that's what I will say is just in general overall, it is very important to be able to find, you know, your village and your support system and how a good support system makes the difference. It it gives you the strength to keep going when you don't always have it yourself. That is what is important to me. That's what has, that really sticks out in my mind. Well, that was a great answer. And you kind of surprised me. I didn't expect you to go that direction. But honestly, I think you're so right. And I think a lot of times we don't think about how much people with disabilities need to know that they've got that same level of support, that there's mm -hmm. people out there that know them, that mm -hmm. care about them, that uh, know what excites them and makes them happy. So, and I think when we've had families join our service uh, circle, they know too that it's not just the family then that really gets their family member, that there's these other people that are there who also want them to have a great life. And I think it's a real relief for families too. So really good spin on that. I like I liked that answer a whole lot. Um, I, I have asked you all the stuff I was really excited to talk about today. Is there anything that you would like to add before we uh, close out that is important for you to share about the city, about your new role, uh, about CE, the day service, what, anything? Well, we're just working hard trying to get people in the city to know that we're here. And when you pass the Del Mar Divine Building, to think of us a little bit every time you pass it, just because, you know, we're providing the next level of service in the building. We just want everybody to be able to have that kind of service available to them and their loved ones so that they can be a part of their community. They can feel like they're making a difference. They do have access to all different kinds of opportunities. Last week, we had a talent show. We celebrated Black History Month. Like, there are just so many different things going on in the community engagement department, you know, day services department. But there's just so much going on in the ARC agency as a whole. So, yeah, I was I was at the Divine. Your guys came back from lunch. They had been working, stocking shelves somewhere. Mm -hmm. And two of them in particular were very interested in going and practicing their routines for the talent shows. So it was really fun to see people so engaged and they were really leading the activities that were being chosen for, for the afternoon for them. So yeah, it, it makes me happy to be able to spend time with them and see them really fulfilling all their potential. So I'm sorry I missed the talent show, but I got to see some of the warm up. So that was good. Well, Shatina, I'm very happy to have you back in the organization and really happy that we're able to partner together to do some of this work in the city. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been really fun to talk with you. Thanks so much. Thank Bye. you.